The Black Knight, just like Frankenstein, he's more than just a storytelling relic. He's an actual Marvel character with his own series of comics. There's actually even a movie called The Black Knight from 2001, but it's not part of the MCU. Welcome back to Top 10 Nerd, everyone. I'm your host, Johnny Rogers, and this is the top 10 facts that you need to know about Marvel's Black Knight. Coming in at number 10, what is a Black Knight? In classic stories, a Black Knight is a character who hides their own identity as well as the identity of the lord or house they represent, but not displaying a family flag or banner. Seeing a Black Knight approach is like a bad omen, as you are likely about to receive a threat or be assassinated or something. They are contrasted by the concept of a White Knight, a concept you're probably familiar with. It's a stereotype that's been adopted by many creators, including Marvel Comics, and they've had quite the ball with it, in fact. In at number 9, who is Marvel's Black Knight? Photo there. Black Knight had this big debut in 1955 in his own self-titled publication from Atlas Comics, one of two companies that would go on to become Marvel. The first Black Knight is Sir Percy of Scandia, the star of his own medieval adventure series that ran for five issues. Next there was his descendant Nathan Garrett, a villain who appeared in the Avengers in the 1960s, and finally Dane Whitman, Garrett's nephew who is the most recent and current version of the Marvel character. Black Knight has done it all, medieval woodland adventures, battling villains with the Avengers, and even being a villain himself. You think that they aren't really sure what to do with the character, but it's more like he fits into a variety of roles well. But let's talk about more of these separate versions of Black Knight. Coming in at number 8, Nathan Garrett. The Nathan Garrett version of Black Knight first appeared in the Avengers number 6 where he nefariously uses his lance to scoop up a big money sack from an armored car and flies off into the sky on a winged horse with it, in classic dastardly supervillain fashion. Man, armored cars really get targeted by villains a lot. His character comes from a certain era, so he's unfortunately the victim of a few cliches. He's a brilliant scientist and inventor specializing in genetic manipulation, a descendant of the original Black Knight, but without the heroic nature. He becomes a radical communist and a spy for the People's Republic of China. In Marvel Super Heroes number 17 from 1968, we learn more of his origin. Inheriting his father's castle, he encounters the spirit of the original Sir Percy in his tomb, and is offered the chance to become the new knight and crusade against evil, but he is unworthy and unable to draw the ebony sword from its resting place. To make a long story short, he becomes a villain instead and soon serves as a member of the Master of evil. Since the death of this version of the character seen here on page 5 of the Avengers number 47, the legacy of his evil ways and his super cool lands have been imitated by the villain Dread Knight. Coming in at number 7, Dane Whitman. Dane Whitman made his big debut in Avengers number 48 as the new heroic version of the Black Knight. One of Marvel's first and finest instances of wiping away the past and doing something fresh with the character. The villainous version of Black Knight was limiting and the Dane Whitman version has been well received and had plenty of action with his Marvel buddy since his inception. This version of the Knight helped the Avengers to take down Kang the Conqueror and also fought against the Defenders against Enchantress. This version of Black Knight also has a winged horse and wields the legendary Ebony Blade. Check out this modern take on Black Knight sporting jeans and looking super edgy with his leather jacket and gloves. In at number 6, his blade and its curves. The blade that the Black Knight carries with him is called the Ebony Blade, as I've mentioned before, and it was forged by Merlin himself. Yes, the same wizard from the Arthurian legend. Its metal is made up of Starstone Meteorite, and according to legend, it can cut through pretty much anything. I mean, if Merlin made it, I would hope so. In addition to this, the weapon also prevents the death of its user. Plus, it can even deflect or absorb magic. Now I just need to find a blade that cuts onions without causing me to cry my eyes out. However, to be real with you guys, because this blade has so much power, it's often a highly sought after weapon by heroes and villains alike. The interesting thing about the Ebony Blade as well is that it can be summoned back to the Black Knight through a mystical ceremony. Now if only we can come up with a mystical ceremony for when you lose your car keys, that'd be really nice. To give you an idea of how negatively the curse on this blade affects its owner, we must look no further than during the War of the Realms, in that the evil Malekith of the Dark Elves stole the blade and rather enjoyed the nature of the curse within. Whereas Dane Whitman, the first of the modern Black Knights, was forced to abandon the sword because he knew he couldn't resist this evil curse that without fail would consume all who holds it. In at number 5, his steed. For starters, the horse for which the Black Knight rides is named Strider, and this mystical creature hails from the land of Valinor. The steed is a winged horse that can soar through the air at extremely high speeds, so fast in fact that his steed has even been known to break the sound barrier. Not only that, but Strider is extremely loyal to the Black Knight and will always come back when called upon. Maybe he can teach my dog how to do that. The thing with Strider though is that he really just belongs to Whitman. Other Black Knights have ridden steeds in the past, but not Strider. For example, Nathan Garrett rode a mechanical robot horse that definitely did not even come close to what Strider was able to pull off in his heyday. Ha! See what I did there? Regardless of how strong these other steeds may be on their own, there is truly only one Strider. In at number 4, New Excalibur. 
The next fact that you need to know is interesting, but also a little bit sad. For those of you who don't know, Excalibur is more than just a sword. It's also the name of a British superhero team based out of London. Although the original team has been disbanded years prior, a new Excalibur team emerged from the House of M. The Black Knight would join the team and fight alongside their leader, Captain Britain. Although they fought together for quite some time, the Black Knight's stay was unfortunately cut short. You see, he discovered that the version of the Ebony Blade that he had with him was a fake. And so Whitman was forced to leave the team and begin searching for the real Ebony Blade. Hence me saying that this part is a little bit sad. Imagine just you just get into the team and they're like, hey, your weapon's fake. You're like, alright, I'll leave. In number three, Heroes for Hire. Despite Dane Whitman seeming like the lone wolf type, he apparently really gets a kick out of teaming up with other superheroes. Typically, the Heroes for Hire team consists of Iron Fist and Luke Cage, but there was a point in time when Black Knight was also in their ranks. You see, after he had assisted in the defeat of the deadly villain Nitro, Iron Fist made a formal offer for Whitman to join the squad, for which he happily accepted. Now, his time with Heroes for Hire was not lengthy by any stretch of the imagination, but it helped show that the Black Knight was without a doubt intertwined with the Marvel Universe. This kind of street cred with comic book readers makes it much easier for writers to fit him into all kinds of other great teams that Marvel has to offer. You know, whenever they feel that it's apropos. Speaking of incredible Marvel teams, in at number two, an Avenger. This addition to the Avengers was not nearly as smooth as his passage to the Heroes for Hire team. After Dane took over the mantle of Black Knight from his uncle, the Avengers attacked him. Soon after, they realized that they had made a mistake, and so instead of viewing him as the enemy, they tried to work with this new Black Knight, which is extremely intelligent of them to do considering that his uncle had quite the villainous past that they could now use to their advantage. Nothing better than the art of surprise, am I right? But believe it or not, Dane was actually able to use this evil reputation as a way of gaining membership with the Masters of Evil. So once he was able to get inside, it became much easier to defeat them from within. This brave and selfless act proved to the Avengers that he was a real one and thus the Black Knight became an important asset to the team. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, upcoming film. Yes, that's right friends, if you've been loving this list thus far, then get excited because in 2021, you're going to get to watch Kit Harrington bring the character of the Black Knight to life in The Eternals. The Eternals introduces a race of superpowered aliens to the MCU that made their comic book debut back in 1976. The Eternals are ancient beings that have been living in secret on Earth for thousands of years, and joining the film will be none other than the Black Knight. Very exciting times right now for comic book fans. The MCU is looking at setting up their future films, and so seeing the Black Knight involved with this gives me hope that he will one day, hopefully, have his own solo film as well. Plus, when that happens, you know it will just set up a whole new flurry of Marvel films. The release date for Marvel Eternals has been set for November 5th, 2021 because the original date of February 12th had to be moved due to the pandemic. But nonetheless, we're excited to see it. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed today's list. Don't forget to smash that like button to show some love to the channel. I've been your host, Johnny Rogers, and until next time, stay classy, YouTube.